Welcome back pre-algebra. We're going to jump into a little bit more geometry today. Um, and we're going to talk about area. The area of something means the amount of space that it covers. That is the, the definition of area that we want to work with. So area is the amount of space Um, and let's say plane, P-L-A-N-E, space, that something covers. I'll tell you what, instead of saying plane, let's say two-dimensional. So 2D space that something covers. Um, think about a sheet of paper or a carpet, or um, the size of your yard. All of those things are uh, measurements of area. They're measurements of a flat space or a flat plane. So area is part of a plane. And a plane is simply a slice of um, or a, a section of a two-dimensional space. And two-dimensional space is length and width. So literally think about a sheet of paper. It has length and it has width, but it doesn't have very much thickness, right? The thickness would be the third dimension, but a piece of paper has almost no thickness. It's like in, in micrometers is what it's measured in. So it's tiny, tiny, tiny. So it's almost, you know, it's almost nothing. Um, so that is what area is. It is the amount, the amount of surface that something covers, right? So in this illustration, I have a little, um, a little piece of area, a little piece of my backyard that I have fenced off and I have fenced off a, a section for my dog to stay in when I'm not at home. And that little section is fairly, you know, it's just right for him. He's a big dog. And he needs four feet by three feet. And then he has a little gate on one end. So four feet by three feet, it doesn't sound like very much. But um, to know how much actual area that is, we would multiply. And that is the formula for area we multiply the value of area is the length times the width so the length times the width and we um, always write length with an l and width with a little w sometimes you're going to see it written like this lw because when you have a letter that represents a value we call that a variable and we'll get to that later but variables, when they're written next to each other, they're automatically multiplied. When we see them next to something, we know that that is a multiplication that is going on. But for right now, if you need to write it length times width, you can go right ahead. You can even write it in longhand, length times width, if that makes more sense to you. That is the formula for area. So you're going to want to put this formula on the back cover of your notebook so that you can access it quickly whenever you need it. So the area of the fenced in part for my dog in the backyard would be four feet and I'm going to shorten feet to its abbreviation feet is written FT, no period, times three feet. And I'm going to shorten that again. So the area of that fenced in portion is four feet by three feet. Now, when we multiply, I'm going to write it again and solve on this side. When we multiply um, units of measure, uh, we actually count them like we would a variable 
as if they have an exponent. So feet has an exponent of one and feet has an exponent of one. And when we multiply exponents, we add them together if they're the same base. And in this case, feet is the same base, so we would add one and one together. Four times three is 12 feet, and that's gonna be squared. Because area has two dimensions, right? Length and width, length and width. So it makes sense that the feet would be represented with a two for two dimensions. So that tells us this is not a length. Length is one dimension. Four foot length by a three foot length gives us a 12 foot area. That exponent of two on the feet tells us that we multiplied two dimensions to get this. So area always has an exponent of two on the unit of measure, whatever that unit of measure is. And that is very, very important. If you give me an answer for an area problem and it does not have the exponent two on there, then points will be taken off. Because if you don't have the exponent of two, then you're not telling me an area. You're telling me a length. All right, that's very, very important. So that is how we calculate area for any shape whatsoever. So let's do example 17.1 and calculate the area of this shape. So in 17.1, we have a um, we have a rectangle here, and that rectangle is 36 inches. Oops, I forgot to switch to my pen. 36 inches by 24 inches. Um, 36 inches. When we write inches, notice with feet, we didn't put the period. With inches, we do put the period. Why do we put the period, Miss Tracy? Because if you just wrote this, that would be the word in. Like you go in the store. Um, or you go in the pool, or you jump in the box. In is a word, but when we put a period behind it, then we differentiate it and we know it is the abbreviation for inches. So you must write the period behind the abbreviation for inches. We're gonna do this the same way that we do um, the area, or we did the area, for my fenced in backyard. I'm not sure what this is. It's just a box right now. Maybe it's a sheet of poster board. That's about the right size for a sheet of poster board. So let's do the area of the poster board. And I like to shorten area to the letter, the capital letter A equals, um, and we know that that's gonna be length times width. So I'm gonna substitute the length. And the length is usually, um, the longer one, but that's not always the case. Um, actually, because it's multiplication, we know that with multiplication, we have what's called the commutative property. So with multiplication, it doesn't matter. We could do width times length or length times width, or we could call this one length and we could call this one um, width. It doesn't matter. But typically, we say the length is the longer dimension. So I'm gonna say 36 inches times 24 inches. And I am going to remember I have an exponent of one here and these are the same base and so I'm going to add the exponents together. Um, but I am going to need some help with 36 times 24 because uh, it's a pretty big number. So I'm gonna write it down and do it this way. And that is going to be 24, carry a 2, 12, 14, and then 2 times 36, put my 0 here, that's 72. So I have 864 inches. And that is 864 
inches squared because there's 864 square inches. Let me sh let me show you that. Let me pause for just a moment and draw it for you. So here I have taken that 36 inches by 24 inches rectangle and I have equally divided it. I have 36 inches across and I have 24 inches down. If you were to manually count each one of these squares, um, you would find that there are 864 of them. I could show you this on something a little bit smaller. Remember the one we did just a moment ago? That was three by four. Let me take a moment and draw that for you again, if I can get my um, pen to work right. Here we go. All right, let me make that look more like a rectangle for you. Okay, so here's our rectangle, and this is four, and this is three, and it was feet, and I don't know why they did that. So this is three feet tall, four feet wide, or three feet, four feet long, three feet wide, however you want to do that. So we have three columns or rows here, one, two, three, and we have four going this way. All right, so four squares this way and three squares this way. Whatever the unit of measure is doesn't matter um, because that's going to transfer over to our answer. So we know that four times three is twelve. One, two, three, four. I'm going to write it. There are 12. We have 12 um, even units within this box. So let's say they are inches. Both of these are inches. So that means we have 12 squared inches within this rectangle. So if we trust our multiplication tables, then we can trust that 36 times 24 is 864 square inches within this rectangle also. So that's kind of how it works. Let's do 17.2 and let's see if we can do that one. Let me clear the page and let me see. All right, so we are given a slightly more difficult, um, let me switch pens, I want the thicker one. So 17.2. We have a slightly more difficult shape here. Of course, they wouldn't make it easy on us, now would they? All right, there we go. I love how this just jumps into the right shape. So we have a length of four here, a length of six here, a length of 12, a length of two, and a length of four. So we're missing a dimension right here. So remember, just like for perimeter, how we found our missing dimension, we realized that this plus this, think about your line segments that we did in the first couple lessons, was equal to this, right? So that means that 12 minus 4, this has to be 8, because then when we put 4 and 8 together, um, it, visually, they're the same as this, and mathematically, they're the same as this. So they have to equal one another. 4 and 8 is 12. So now we have all of our dimensions that we need. So we could find the perimeter, but what we're looking for now is the area. How in the world are we going to find the area of a weird shape like this? Well, you're not going to be able to do it in one step. We know area equals length times width. In this situation, it's going to be a whole lot easier if we break it down into two different shapes, shapes that we can easily identify and do the calculation for. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change my pen over to a green so you can see where I'm marking. I'm going to just bring this line all the way down, and I'm going to call this area 1. 
and I'm going to call this area two because now we have a rectangle and a rectangle. And I know how to find the area for a rectangle, but I don't know how to find the area for a lopsided L. So in area one, I need to find my length and my width. So my length is six. That goes from this corner to this corner. That's the full length. And the full width of the rectangle here is four. So six times four. And I'm gonna write it just like that. Area one is equal to six, and this is going to be centimeters, centimeters times four centimeters. Um, I'm going to write that a little bit over this away. Move it over just so I have more room. Six times four is 24, and centimeters once, centimeters twice is centimeters two times. All right? If you do it that way, you won't forget the two exponent on your unit of measure. So let's do area two. Area two is going to be equal to length times width. So I need the length from here to here, right? The length from here to here is eight. And then the width of this rectangle is two, corner to corner. So that's gonna be eight centimeters times two centimeters. That's uh, eight times two is 16. Centimeters once, centimeters twice is centimeters two times. They, if they have the same unit of measure here, including the exponent, then you can add them together. So you just bring down the unit of measure, which is centimeters area uh, or centimeters squared, and then we add these together. Four and six is 10, carry one, and that's gonna be 40 centimeters of area in this shape. And that is the easiest and best way to do this, is to break it down into shapes that you can recognize in order to find the total area. All right, however many different shapes that has to be, then that's what you do. All right, and guess what? That's all we have for lesson 17. I will see you in lesson 18 if you have any questions whatsoever. If this boggles your mind even just a little bit, please reach out and ask me and I will help you with some more videos or some one-on-one -on -one instruction. Um, and I will see you next time.